Hi everyone, it's Rachel here. So I just wanted to show you this one. I did a second um, Lurie Girl on the Ridge inspired file folder. So on the front here, I've got some of our papers. Um, that is a Nostalgia Graphic Land label. I don't know if I put it on upside down. Yes, I think I did. Doesn't matter. Um, a bird that I cut out. Um, one of Tracy's labels. And then on the reverse side, I put my pocket on this way. It was the envelope. Um, just an owl and a bit of Florentine paper. And I put one of our tags in there um, as well. I absolutely love doing these, um, Laurie. I never did one before because, um, I don't know, I just thought they were so hard. And then I watched your video and I'll just show you inside and they are great and I actually flipped this one around the other way so the pocket um, is up here and not down the bottom so I just collage there a little bit you can write there um, just here that can, you could write or collage on there and I did something different here this flips out so all, all of our papers and then um, I put just a little tag in there it's actually a glassine bag that I folded up to create a pocket and then there's a little tag in there I might add a flower or something on there but I didn't have anything fussy cut that's appropriate because I've used it all and then up the top I've got my pocket I love that collage there with Steph's paper there um, that was he really wanted to photograph that garden it was next to a church um, and so I collaged over it there put a doily on the front and um, just did a bit of collaging there that's good for writing and then I made a I haven't put anything in the pocket here I could put some little fussy cut things in there for decorating or something I put one of our stickers I can't remember if that's mine or Lulu's um, just this little doily that was left over and it's a little glassine bag and that's a little booklet to muck around with or rip up and use or write in and um, just very simple so I just thought that can tuck in the pocket there so that's the second one I did I will eventually get to oh I will eventually get to the big one. I um, love I love these. These are addictive. And you could tie something around them. I absolutely love them. So I did two. So that's the... I'll photograph this one for Instagram tomorrow because the, the light's not right now. And that's my other one. So I, I just love those. Love those. Okay. So now let's get back to this. Let me update you what I've done. So yesterday I showed you and I think I had or tacked or pinned all of these, had I? Or maybe I hadn't. I can't remember. I need to watch the video. Anyway, I last night all I did was I stitched everything down, ready to work on, and I stitched down a few bits of laces. I don't. I can't remember what I showed you in the video, so I'll just show you now. Um, and I just found because one of the um, the next um, after choosing all your fabrics and materials, of course, I've got to do some more here. Um, the next thing in for February, which has passed, obviously, was to add yo-yos. Now, I've got these vintage or antique yo-yos, and that one's even broken. I really like that. So I'm going to stitch those down now. Um, I'll show you how I do that. And um, and then we might do a little bit of stitching or something. But I might uh, I need to make a couple of yo-yos as well. So I'm following my mama's instructions and, and um, following the prompts. So I'll just do my knot. I think I'll stitch down with this length of thread. I'm just using regular um, sewing machine cotton. And to stitch it down, you just catch it. If you want it to be invisible, you've really got to catch it on the edge there. Um, and then it makes it a little bit more hidden. Um, you could do you could do this with, um, with embroidery floss so it's visible. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with them yet. So that's why I'm not doing that. Um, so... We'll just go along and do this. It's very quick to stitch these down. Sometimes I like, if I'm not quite sure, I've actually zoomed in, so I really hope I'm on screen because I could shoot myself in the foot, couldn't I? I hope I'm on screen. I'll just try and stay here and hope for the best that I'm on screen because if I'm not, I won't publish the video and I get too many complaints. So, so it's called whip stitching. You just whip it around. Around you go. And I really liked the colour of these. They're old, um, but they look like they've been um, tea dyed, but they haven't. They're just old. They're just that colour. 
And I've got some more, but they're at the bo uh, box underneath some other boxes and <laughs> I was too lazy to pull them out. So I'm going to follow the rules a little bit. And then I can, mum said, mum said I can then go on a tangent once I've followed the rules. I'm just going to put this on because it's a bit thicker here. Um, so one person said um, that I was lucky that, you know, I could, had access to great fabrics in Italy. I do, but most of these fabrics, um, like the colourful fabrics, did not come from Italy. They came from England, France, and I got some in Australia. So um, you don't generally find a lot of these fabrics here in Italy. Well, I haven't. I only, I mean, I can get wonderful hemps and things like that, but not... And some embroideries, not too many, but the majority come from England and France. And then, of course, in Australia, because, you know, in Australia, um, it was settled by the English. And, and so a lot of us have that sort of stuff. And there's a lot of it about in Australia. Um, maybe not so much the, well, no, I think lots of, there's lots of sellers selling Sanderson fabrics in Australia. So, um there must be quite a bit of that about. See how nice? I love that colour. Oh, wait, I've got to go this way. So we'll stitch these ones down, and then I have no idea. So these are called, in the States, and, and I'm not sure, sometimes in Australia and in the States, I'm not sure about the UK, they're called yo-yos. Um, but we also call them, like the English do, Suffolk puffs as well in Australia. So I'm just going to stitch this down. I really liked the fact that that's all broken and it, I think it creates texture. But I am using mostly um, vintage or antique fabrics in this, mostly, probably not all, not exactly every single one. But um, yeah, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to put some of these older, gr more grungy puffs on there. I will show you. I mean, most people know how to make them. I'm not even an expert at making them. Um, I used to just, I couldn't be bothered to turn it, so I used to make them just with the raw edge. It's a bit thick here. Okay, can take that pin out. So I hope everybody is well. You're getting a lot of videos from me. That's why I, I did catch up on pretty much all the comments today. I didn't, there were some of the older ones. I read them on unless there was a question or something specific I felt like I needed to answer or reply to. I didn't, I just read them and liked them because I, ha I was really way behind. And part of that reason is you know because Steph's working on the computer so I have to get off at a certain hour and yesterday I didn't even stay on the computer at all because I had to go to the supermarket and as you know I was there I did I was out for two and a half hours to do and what normally takes me 20 minutes so um I didn't get that that done yesterday so I got really behind um but I'm all caught up now and I did answer most so I'll do my best um, it's just that, you know, also last night I, I could have sat and answered some last night, but then I wanted to stitch all the fabrics down. Otherwise it couldn't go ahead. Okay. So we're nearly there. We're more than halfway. And I think that everything takes on a different life when it's stitched on, it's sort of sort of all unifies it all becomes one piece and then I feel like I get a clearer vision as to where I want to go with it and I'm really thrilled to see so many of you are participating it's very exciting and if anyone's doing a video let us know because we'd love to come and watch I think Jessica Harris, you might have done a video, did you? I think you might have. So um, I would love to. Uh, I've got. I've actually got it in my watch list. I'm very behind because I didn't get any watching done yesterday. Um, so yeah, 
you know, when you're recording, you'd be surprised how much um, time goes away. Oh, and my sister's secret garden. How cool was that? I love that. I knew she was going to do that. We agreed to do something different, not both do like opening doors like that. Um, and so I said to her, you can do the door if you want to, because she had her idea already. And I said, I'll do something else. I said, I might do a journal page, which is what, what I ended up doing. But her door is fabulous. I love it. And I'm very pleased to know, Sarah, that you forget words as well. It's not just me. Because I do feel like a ding-dong. Am I on screen? I think so. I hope you can see, guys. So I'm just whip-stitching around. I find it actually very relaxing, this, because... Now, I need to go along and stitch that bit too. Um, I actually find it incredibly relaxing because it's... you don't Once you've pinned it all in place, you don't actually have to think about it. The only thing you have to think about is um, not doing big dog's teeth stitches. Um, although sometimes big stitches do look nice. Um, and the other thing is, um, you just have to be careful. You, you know, your fabrics don't crinkle. Like you just, when I'm, when I'm stitching all these bits on, I do lay it down every so often just to make sure it's all flat, that I haven't sort of bunched it all up. Okay, so that is it. And I really like that broken one. I really do. I'm going to see if I think I know I've got some more broken ones. I have to pull the bag out, put some more broken ones on. You know me, if it's broken, I like it even more. So lots of people are asking, what would you do? Well, I'm not going to do it. This is just something to look at. It's going to go on the antique bobbin when it arrives. And, um, oh, look, I left the thread in there. Um, it's going to go on the antique bob bobbin when it arrives. And then and it'll just be something that I look at. So sometimes the, the basting thread, um, or the, what do you call it, the, um, is it basting? I can't remember. We've had this discussion before, haven't we? Sometimes it accidentally gets stitched in. You just have to do your best to pull it out. Just snip it if you can't pull it out. Okay, so I will show you these fluffy things, but I just want to try another method because I did this the method that mum said, and it was fine. It was a little bit... Um, fiddly and then I did this another method but I I kind of did it wrong so I had to go back and fill it in so I want to try this the way I did this but in a different way and then um, when I figured out which one is the best mum's method might be the best one um, and then I'll show you that one because I will put those again here and there somewhere else um, now this um, Sammy asked me about this this is very simple there was nothing tricky about this this was um, the stem is just I put it on with this um, a water erasable pen um, so you just squirt it and it kind of goes away um, I just bought it at Daiso when I was in Australia they do there's no point in spending what well, I've found even when I've bought the really perfect you know good um, embroidery ones they stop working after a while especially if you use them quite a bit um, so I just bought this from Daiso I think it was like two Aussie dollars probably about one euro um, I probably I should have bought more. I bought a pink one that didn't work. Um, you just draw it on and then when you squirt it, it will go away. Um, I just drew the lines and, um, and so the stem is backstitch and I should bring it up closer for you. It's backstitch and these are just all, um, colonial knots and some of them are loose and I let them, um, stay loose because I saw on Anne's video that she was doing the French knots on purpose that were loose so you get little loopy bits and I like that so I let them if they were loose I didn't worry about them I let them have little loopy bits as well because I thought that was good so anyway I've got two yo-yos on there now let me have a look in my fabrics um everything just keeps going backwards and forwards from the tv room I don't need my basting thread at the moment so I'll put that over there and I've got my fabrics here Got a little hoop there just in case. I've got my other needle book. So um, I could make a Suffolk puck puff out of this linen um, that is Sanderson. However, it's quite thick, so I probably wouldn't. So I'm going to choose a fabric, if I have any, that's not too thick. 
I also thought um, I have this fabric. I think this is my last piece because most of it I put in that um, kit that I sold um, to make the old journals. But I thought I might cut one or two of those off and put them on because they're really nice. And I haven't found a spot for my hole. The hole's going to go on there somewhere. You know this hole. You've, ever since you've known me, I've had this hole. So that's going to go somewhere. Isn't that silly? Anyway, I th I'm thinking maybe a Suffolk puff in this would be nice somewhere. So let's make one in that. Now, you, I, I don't know. I don't know the maths of it, but you need quite a big circle. Um, I think I'll just do... See, if I do this circle, it will become... I think I'll do this circle. It becomes very small. So anyway, I'll show you. I'll draw it with... Will I draw it with a pencil? So you draw your circle on. Now, this just came from Kmart in Sydney, this circle thing. Um in the station in the like they had a they have a scrapbooking sort of se section um was it came out yes i think it was this pencil does not it's not a good pencil now this is an h this is lulu's actually this is i don't know how this got into my room this is lulu's um that's really it's one of her sort of for art it's an h they need h pencils um to draw on fabric a b is better because it's softer um it's yeah it draws better but um it doesn't come off, so just always be aware of that. It will not come off. Well, not very well anyway, if you use an eraser. So that's that. Now, I'll just try to be good. Because they're not all crink crumpled, my fabrics, I'm trying to be good and, and not shove them. Because I do end up shoving things back in the basket. So I'm folding it like a good girl. Won't last long, but I'm trying my best. Okay, and I need my good scissors. And so it doesn't have to be a perfect circle in the sense that we're going to... Anyway, Anne shows you how to make yo-yos. So you don't really need to watch me make a yo-yo because Anne shows you. And she's really good at showing those things. And I'm going to trim off these bits. I don't know if I'll throw them out or not. I wonder. I'll keep those bits. You never know. You might use them. I'll put them over there. Okay, so where's my... Oh, I've lost my needle. Oh, I just threw my needle. Um, no, I need a longer thread than that. You just need regular cotton. Um, here it is. So this, when I've got it on my sewing machine, when it gets down to about that amount, I take it off. Um, and I keep it for appliqueing and that sort of thing. Because there's no point in... you Like, you'll, that'll finish in two two seconds and then you've got to re-thread the machine again for the new one so I take it off and keep that for hand sewing oh yeah so I was talking about so mine's going on a bobbin and it's just going to be something to look at when you feel like it um, it'll look pretty on the shelf and collect a bit of dust <laughs> um, but I'm you know I'm putting bits of pieces in there that I love so um, I will, I'll always have them um, so some people are making a square and going to frame it. Um, you know, I've done things like that. So um, I just want to do it, do it as Anne's doing it because I've already done um, squares and, I've, well, I've started them. And I've done ones for journals. Started those and haven't finished those either. No, actually, I meant to be going the other way. I'll just take, take my knot off and do it again. I think I'll go the other way because I want to see what I'm doing so basically you get your circle and you just um, just fold it down as you go you can do it with a raw edge like you don't have to you can just gather that and pull that in if you want that but um, the, otherwise you do it you just fold your ed edge in and run your stitches along okay Actually, I don't need this on. This is hindering me. See, those things hinder me. Unless I'm going through th thick fabric and then they don't hinder me. They help me. But for things like this, it just gets in my way. Makes me feel hot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy, 
for um, suggesting Laurie Girl on the Ridges file folders. I probably would never have had the courage to do those. I really enjoyed doing that. I can hear somebody munching on something. And I'm not munching on anything. What are you munching on? Steffi? Oh, he's not answering me. It's a secret. Hopefully you can see. Hopefully I'm on screen. I better check. I think I am. The setup's pretty good this year, um, but I have zoomed in, as I said, and that could be my downfall. I'm zooming in. I may not like this. I might have to just keep it and use it for something else. And I might iron it so it flattens, because look how nice and flat they are because they're old, because they've been flattened. Okay, my threads come out. I think this is a very um, good project for someone who's, um, you don't have to be like a mad embroiderer to be able to do this because as you can see, the majority of the stitches are just running stitch or canthus stitch or all the stitches. I mean, it's all saying the same thing. Shashiko, shashiko is running stitch, but it do, it does patterns. There's shashiko patterns, but it's still all running stitch. Seed stitch, seed stitch is really easy. You just put all the stitches in different directions. So you don't have to do anything complex. And Anne shows a lot of stitches on her channel, and and does it very well. Except she's a lefty like me, so that that's probably you just have to reverse it. I learned to do colonial knots from my mum and she's a righty, so if I can learn anybody. And then what you do when you get to the where you started at, you pull it. You've got to pull it carefully because it can um, it can tear. Isn't that cute? And then you flatten it. Anyway, I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna pull it and then I'm going to can I pull it any tighter? I don't think so. I'm just going to capture a bit of thread there and and knot it. And then I'll sort out its shape. Okay. Now we'll just... And you want that, um, that fluffy bit in the centre. There we go. Look at that. Oh, isn't that cute? I like that. I do think I would do want it. I don't want it to be so bulky though. And sometimes, if you want to, when you're doing applique, like you would do, wouldn't turn it like that. You just do it raw edge, and then you can turn it over, and you get a nice circle. That's good. Now, I would like to flatten it though. But we'll see. Like it can go somewhere because I like the colours. Would I, I don't want to cover that up. I think I wanted to do some embroidery on there, but um, I've stopped myself doing that right now. Oh, I like it there. I think I'm going to put it there. But I need to flatten it. And I don't have my iron on. I'm not going to do that now. I think I'll stitch it on, and then I'll iron it afterwards. See how puffy that is? I could even put a few stitches in and keep it down. So I'm going to put that there. I like that. I like those colours. And again, I'm just, that's probably boring for you to see that. I'm just whipping, stitching around. Really the hardest thing in this, I think, is what do I, you just say to yourself, what do I want to do next? What's next after this? It's just knowing what do you want to do where? So I'll probably make a few more puffs and um, add those. Okay, I'm nearly 
at the beginning. Yep, I do like that. Put that there. Okay. Okay, I'm just looking at it thinking, what do I want to do? I'm just going to snip off one of these. I know I'm going off on a tangent. I'm not supposed to be looking at these things, but I just can't help myself. I'm just going to get a little cut there. And I cut there. Oh, got it. Oh, cut it. Very bad girl I am. Okay, I think you need to go somewhere. Oh, I like it with the Suffolk puffs. I don't want to cover up my, 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 my. Oh, I had it upside down. I do like that. I'm going to put it there. Or... I think I really like it there. I didn't want to cover that up, but I am. It's peeking out. It will peek out at us. That's what it will do. It's a bit like collaging, isn't it? You you put things down and then you cover them up. And you ask yourself, why did I do that? Maybe I would like it a bit more like that. No, I like it near there. That's where I like it. So I'm just going to stitch that down. You just make decisions. You can pick it, you can snip it at the back and take it off if you don't like it. Quite often um, I come back to it the next day and as I said with my embroidery that I did on there, I was thinking, oh, I don't like that. I spent all that time doing that. And then I liked it. It's really just a collection of stitches, trying things out, practicing, and little bits and pieces that you like, that you want to keep, or have a record of. Um, you know, like, this would be, yes, of course you could do this and it could go around a journal, but I, I personally wouldn't do it if I was selling the journal. Um, there's... A lot of work in this. There's a lot of hours. It's all hand stitch. There's no machine stitching, and yes, machine stitching does is nice, and I do a lot of machine stitching, as you know. Um, but hand stitching is special as well, if not more. But it takes a long time. getting there and you can see I'm just doing this it's kind of like I call it whip stitching but it can also be called I think it's overcast stitching as well um, so you're just going over the edge close to the edge and just you know attaching it And then I'll show you after something else. I'll probably... Oh, I haven't attached one of those brown ones yet. I like those. And also the possibility of colours with this is just endless. Like you can do pastels would be beautiful. Um, I just went with one fabric 
couple of fabrics that I really wanted to include and then um, and then it you know then you just pull out fabrics that you think coordinate with it I'll have to end that off and get a new bit um, and so that's how my color palette grew but um, I also love pastels and I love you know the different shades of neutrals and um, I love the blues like the Japanese blues the bottle colors I've got all those fabrics that I've well, I don't have as much as my mum but I have some really nice Japanese fabrics so I might even do one of those It'd be really cool and I'd love to do a, a beige one like not just not just beige but beigey um, I'd love to do a pastel one so I mean the the it's just endless what you can do with this and of course you can those who love bright you can go bright okay right oh I love that okay so I'll just show you what I've done and my next job now is to think about um, what else do I want to add I want to add a couple more yo-yos but I'm not going to bore you making yo-yos and stitching on yo-yos I'll do that later um, yeah you see it's taking on its dimension I like that now I really like that um, I did want to add, I do want to put this somewhere, but I'm not going to put this anywhere yet. Um, and I've also got these. I'd like to add these somewhere. Again, I haven't found the spot where I want to add those. I might. They might be something that I add after. And the other thing I really liked was this. But this I really, I would, thought I might like it. Now these are quite expensive to buy. I think they were in the bag a lady gave me. Um, but I would like to put it on like that, not like that. I'd like it to be like that. But then I, I'll have to cut it. But then I actually really like that. And I would like I would cut it um, and then put that bit somewhere else as well. So the whole thing will go on. So that will happen as well. And someone will probably tell me off for cutting it. But that's what's going to happen. So, um, yep, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, so what we've done is stitch down some yo-yos and I'm going to put, do some more, but I need to find my other old ones. I'm going to do a mix of new and old ones, I think. Um, and now I need to have a think about what I need to do some stitching here. This is all a bit plain. So there need to be some stitching like these and things might happen here yet because, but we still got to come back and add, um, knots, although I've done some knots there, but I need to come back and add knots around and I need to also, um, then the next week after that was, but next month was buttons and then hexagons. So we're going to need room for hexagons as well. Um, hexies. So uh, I think I'll end it there. I know I didn't do any, 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 any sort of embroidery stitches, but um, anyway, I just wanted to show you how it's coming along. And, um, and then I'll do some more videos, but I need to know, have a better idea of what I want to do. Like I think here... Like there I went round in a circle. Here I'm going to go round, I think. No, here I might go across. I might go all across, across, across. I have to decide. Um, and then here I'm going to go round, round these, maybe around there. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. Okay, so I hope that um, is helpful. I'll just show you quickly what's happening here. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye.